Hello all, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we have seen how to publish messages to AWS IoT Broker and how to send messages from IoT Broker to your email as well as SMS clients. So this tutorial, I am trying to show how to store your data into a cloud-based database. So AWS provides a cloud-based database which they call as DynamoDB. It is a NoSQL database and uh, it has several advantages okay so first thing i will quickly show you dynamodb then we will see how to store data into dynamodb so you log into your aws console and search for dynamodb and uh, you will get the console of dynamodb okay so again every aws service it has a console which looks similar okay so since i don't have any database now this is how the welcome screen looks like now, basically, uh, Amazon, they call each database as a table. Okay, so on the left, you can see tables. So if you want to create a new database, you will go to tables and click table and choose create table. And you need to give some name to your table. Okay, let's use the table or the database to store some temperature data. So I'm calling it temperature uh, database. Okay, now another thing that you need to provide is something called a primary key. So as I mentioned before, uh, they use a special technique to store data into database. So each row in the database should be uniquely identified. For that, uh, they will be internally using a technique called hashing. Okay, so to identify each row uniquely, AWS requires something called a primary key that as a user you should provide. That primary key, can be of string type, uh, binary type, or a number type, okay? Any three of them. So in most cases, we'll be using a string type uh, because they will be able to apply hashing on string and they'll be able to store it. Again, when we are using temperature things like that, we need to associate uh, each temperature value with some particular uh, time and date. So we can be able to provide this information in a string format and using that string, uh, AWS will be uniquely able to identify that particular row in the database. Okay, so primary key, I'm just uh, calling it time. So these are the names. This is the name of the table. This is the name of the primary key, which is used for uniquely identifying a particular row in your database. So once you have done this much, choose create. Now when you use uh, DynamoDB, um, again, first year it is free, but with certain limit. So there are restrictions on what is the maximum size of your database and how many times you can read and write from the database. So if you cross that limit, uh, you will have to pay AWS. So keep that in mind. So uh, when you develop IoT for testing purpose, uh, make sure after you don't you don't run your application like all the night or something because that can incur charges because you are making too many read and write from the table. Okay, so he already created the table again. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Now we will go to the details later. Uh, at the time being, what we are interested is to put some data into this database. So you go to items and here you can see like types because I specified that as by partition key. Okay, so if you want to create an item, you can go to create item and you can specify the item now if you notice here at the top there are two options tree or text you can either uh, enter your item value using the tree format or the text format but when you choose text format you can uh, immediately see like uh, this is following json format you can see the curly bracket and he's saying the attribute is time and we are supposed to give some value to this time and that should be a string type okay so let's give some date maybe today's date for 7 uh, 2020 and let's me give some time also 11 45 okay so that is the time after that whatever data you want to store in the database so i want to store temperature now as i mentioned before everything in json should be in the attribute value format and your attributes they should be strings and they should be put inside double quotes to indicate they are string your values can be strings uh, numbers uh, even arrays 
things like that okay no not much restriction on what is the value but uh, the attribute should be string type so if you want to enter temperature you need to put temperature in double quotes and uh, put the value here say 25 okay and you can save it and now you can see that got entered into the table now the beauty about this uh, non-sql database is uh, there is no restriction on the number of columns you can have in the table. It can be variable length. What I mean is each item in the table can have different number of fields. For example, here I have only one field uh, called temperature. But when I create a new item, uh, say again time, that is mandatory because that is our primary partition. Okay, so let's put some value. Okay, and here... Let me just put pressure bars and uh, you can save it. We need a comma here. Okay. See, if you look at this item, it has only temperature attribute. There is no pressure attribute. But if you look at this attribute, it doesn't have temperature attribute, but has only pressure attribute. So this is one advantage of this uh, non-SQL DynamoDB. So the number of uh, fields for each item can be different. Okay, and uh, practically there is no limitation on no number of fields that you can have. But for our IoT application, mostly every item will have same number of attribute. Okay, so this is about DynamoDB. And as I mentioned before, this is a separate service on AWS. This is not part of IoT, but we are going to link our IoT application with this DynamoDB database. That's what we are going to do. So first thing, we have to modify our uh, publisher code because uh, as you notice, in our current publisher code, we are just sending the temperature value, which is the uh, current temperature with the attribute temperature. Now, practically uh, in DynamoDB, you have to give one key which has to be used for uniquely identifying a row. But the problem is you can have uh, multiple temperature with the same value. So you won't be able to uniquely identify each row. That is one thing. And if you simply store the temperature values in the database, it doesn't make sense because it's not giving any, any special information. So usually you need to store temperature and the associated time or something like that. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So I'm slightly modifying my Python code. Uh, I'm going to get the current system time. For that, we can use the date time package. So if you want to get the current time, okay, so here we are reading the temperature. Okay, let's here get the time. Let's call it time time or something. You can say simply date time dot date time dot now. Okay, so when you use this function, it will return the current date and time. Now we need to form the message. Okay, so let's look at the architecture. This is how the message should look like. Maybe we can put the timestamp at the beginning. So curly bracket within double quotes timestamp. So we have curly bracket within double quotes. We can say time stamp and followed by a colon and we need to add the actual timestamp. So we need to convert it into string format. Next year string plus after that we need a comma. Okay. After each attribute we need to put a comma. So we need a comma. After that we can have the temperature. Again, that should be in double quotes. So I need to put a single quote here. So temperature post and the temperature value and this much. Okay, let's try to run and see whether it is giving any error. Okay, it looks fine. Now let's see whether it is really coming in JSON format. So let me go back and uh, let me open my IoT platform and use my dummy client to check whether I'm getting the data properly or not. So I'm just deleting this table. We will recreate it later. So I'm going to my IoT 
for back and let me test it now yesterday remember we created a rule whenever i get some temperature i need to send an email now i i don't want to keep on getting email so first thing i am going is i am going to act so this is the email uh, this is the rule which was sending email to me for the time being let me just disable it otherwise i will keep on getting emails okay so let me go back to test and client subscribe to a topic let's put uh, this one temperature topic subscribe and let's rerun our code okay Okay, it is sending, but here he is saying something is wrong. So we have curly bracket. Okay, so this is a string. So we need to put double quote uh, across this value also to indicate this is a string because this is not a number. You can see there are numbers, but there are uh, bank spaces as well as colon. So altogether, this should be treated as a string. So let me go back and here we need to put double quotes. Okay, so single quote double quote single quote plus or you can put backslash also backslash double quote and uh, plus single quote double quote single quote or we can put this comma also with this okay this should do let me stop and rerun okay no, he is not complaining because it is in JSON format. Okay, so we have the timestamp. The center thing is the time, and we have temperature, and this is the temperature value. Timestamp is a string, and temperature is a number, floating point number. Okay, so we are getting it. Next, we need to put this information into the database. So the steps are exactly same as the same way you did for SNS. We need to go to Act. Uh, we need to go to rules you can add it to the same rule no problem because same message is coming it can go to sns as well as uh, to database no problem but uh, for the time being let me create a new rule and uh, let me call it uh, iot yeah, temperature dynamo db rule so here like yesterday select star from the name of the topic take the entire message from the topic our topic is temperature topic no special condition we are always taking an add action and choose insert a dynamo a message into a dynamo db table and configure action and table name okay if you created a table there in DynamoDB, it will automatically come here because I deleted it there. It is not coming here. Okay. So let's click on create a new resource, which will actually open up DynamoDB and you can create a table now. So let's call it uh, temperature table and primary key. Okay. That's why we created this one. So you need to give the attribute name there, which you are going to use as the primary key so it is timestamp it is a string okay we can say create so he created it may take a few seconds okay now let's come back here and click refresh okay and you can see that table is already here and he he automatically filled these parts timestamp string but important thing is this key value okay this so this this is just the name of the key okay so the name of the key is always timestamp now he's asking what should we use for actually hashing uh, for finding a particular row okay so what value should be used for hashing to uniquely identifying a row that is actually the value of timestamp okay so slightly confusing why it is there but uh, you need to write like this the name of the key is timestamp and the actual value used for uh, finding a particular row or for hashing is the value of timestamp so you need to put this dollar similar to our excel so this is indicating the value coming in timestamp okay so that's it and uh, these things uh, we can see later 
time being it's enough now here again you have this roll thing you have seen last time uh, which is for managing uh, the security thing so last time we created a role already so that will be already listed here but this time let me create a new role again why we are doing it we will see in later tutorial uh, what this role is actually doing and where this information is stored when we discussed about uh, aws iam we will discuss it so for the time being just create a new role so let me call it my iot dynamo db role and choose create role and uh, that comes here policy is auto automatically attached and choose create action so that comes here now you choose create rule so now you have two rules but this one is disabled only this one is enabled now let's go ahead and run our code once again Okay, so he's sending data. Now let's come to our table here and look at item. And you can see whenever he's sending a message that is getting updated here. Okay, so each time you refresh the table here, you can see that uh, this information is getting updated here. Now you will notice that uh, he's putting that entire payload okay the content of that entire message here because that's how we asked in the sql whenever a message comes give that entire message to uh, dynamo db that's how we wrote our sql query where here so that entire thing is going here from that he is using uh, the the timestamp part for finding a unique row then he's storing that entire thing as payload now if you want to store only this temperature part here we have to do something more so the easiest thing to do it is the following okay so you can use this technique uh, provided you want to store only one attribute uh, value in a separate column so when you create the table now i cannot edit the attribute of this table when you create a table let's create a new one okay my new temperature table and here again let's give a uh, times timestamp there's an option add sort key okay so when you add this there will be an option for one more key so this is like a secondary key and uh, you can use this key for sorting the values in the table ascending or descending order okay so we can make advantage of this and you can give temperature as this sort key and our temperature is a number type it's a floating point number so keep number type and let's keep a new table here so now we have two tables here this is our old table and this is our new table now let's go ahead and change the action here so okay so let's refresh refresh and choose our new table and here you can see timestamp dollar timestamp here already filled the sort key already came here right so the key value here is dollar temperature and remember to click this option update role okay otherwise uh, nothing might work and choose update okay okay so now we are going to insert whatever item is coming to this second table i guess code is still running no okay so let me rerun my code and now if i come to the items here you will see see this is that additional key the sort keys because using this you will be able to sort in ascending and descending and since i said like use temperature as my sort key that got inserted into a separate column so the temperature values are here the timestamps are here and the enter message is here okay so this way uh, you can have it in a separate column provided it's only one item 
so if you want to store temperature and pressure in two separate columns we have to do something more that we will discuss later now one thing is if you want to download this file to your local computer you can just click here and go to actions and choose export to csv so he will download it as a csv file to your computer and uh, you can use it locally for for if you want to do any processing maybe we are not interested the entire payload you can delete it and you can have time and temperature values in this file fine okay so uh, one thing remember as i mentioned before uh, for safety purpose we are just testing things once you have done testing once you understood things just go ahead and uh, delete the table so that in future if you accidentally keep on sending data it doesn't get stored in this table and aws charges you okay so that's all for this tutorial see you in the next tutorial